morning. Uh, afternoon, I guess I should say. It is hot as Hades out here, but we finally are going to get some rain coming in. Thank God, after four weeks, I looked at the 10-day forecast, and we've got every single day is 35 to 60% chance of rain. Hallelujah. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about, I notice a lot of people get mixed results with this deep bedding method on their chicken coop or chicken house. So I want to talk about that today and I want to relate it to composting. Now, one of the things some of you people know about me, uh, some of you don't, is I'm not, I don't consider myself an inventor, but all my life, all my career as an entrepreneur and in my businesses, I've always thought about problem solution problem solution. I have about 20 patents and it's only because I was willing to think outside the box and do things that sounded crazy. Let's start there. So what I wanted to do is when we built this chicken coop, I wanted to do something a little bit different. Almost every coop you see inside the hen house will have a solid floor of some type. It's completely solid. And then the deep bedding method, what it does is you just basically keep adding, you add three to six inches of some kind of bedding material. A lot of people use hemp and you just keep adding to it and adding to it. The theory there is you're almost trying to work like a compost pile where you take the ex excrements, you take a lot of that urea that turns into ammonia and then nitrogen. Oh, there goes a deer running across the field. What are you doing, buddy? Okay. <laughs> That's crazy. It's all day long out here. The theory is that it's gonna break down and you have a lot of carbon, whether it's wood chips, whether it's wheat straw, whether it's hemp, and then that carbon to nitrogen ratio is extremely high in that. So you have 400 parts carbon to one part nitrogen and wood chips, let's say. So you add nitrogen and those nutrients, it all works together and breaks down and becomes a beautiful compost. Here's the problem with that. The majority of compost really needs to be, if you want nice compost, needs to be aerobic. Aerobic means that there's oxygen being introduced into it, that it doesn't dry out too much, that it doesn't get too wet. So when you're dealing with compost piles like this, you actually have to come out here and feel it. You have to make sure that it's not completely dry. You have to make sure it's not too wet. And you have to turn this. Some of these big compost piles, we're using the skid steer to turn this. We're adding organic matter. We're adding nutrients. We actually add Dirt Booster Plus inside here, which has biochar and humic acid and organic matter and mycorrhizal fungi. So that's how we get these piles. We don't use any fertilizers in our gardens anymore. Zero. We just use um, the super compost we make. Here's the problem where a lot of these things fail. They start to turn anaerobic. The assumption is that chickens are gonna be inside that little house and are gonna be scratching and scratching and scratching. That doesn't always happen. In other words, the chickens are not turning that compost pile. If you actually watch the behavior inside that chicken house, a lot of times they're just in there to roost. They're not inside there doing a whole lot of digging. Not, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't but it's certainly not enough for a deep bedding method to actually stir that all up. And so you'll see a lot of people online, I've seen a lot of videos lately where people are turning that, that deep bedding. In other words, when the chickens go outside once a week or once every two weeks, whenever they'll actually go in there and turn that and that's the right system. You need to make sure. Let me give you an example. Here's a brooder bin. That brooder bin, when we had the chicks in here, we kept adding and adding and adding, but guess what was on the bottom when we turned that over? It was this nasty anaerobic layer of nasty crap slime junk. And that's what happens because it's not being turned. So again, understand the difference, and you can Google this, understand the difference between aerobic and anaerobic. You need to understand the difference between those two. Um, the aerobic uses a oxygen loving bacteria. It's good. That's really the healthy compost that you're going to make. So let me show you the experiment that I'm working on now. And so far, I want to test this for several months. Um, but, you know, you also have another factor. Here's another factor. A lot of times it's winter time and we cannot get compost piles to start when the temperature gets really cold. Microbial activity drops way down when it gets cold. So if you're in a cold environment, and you're relying on um, a chicken coop or a chicken house to actually have good microbial activity, it may not happen. Um, 
So a lot of times you have to jump start it. We actually on our compost piles early spring, we actually pour boiling water in our compost piles to actually start that. And once we do that, it'll actually start and heat up. We've gotten these compost piles up to 150 degrees within a matter of three days. Now that's because we're using the Dirt Booster Plus compost. But let me show you the experiment here. Most chicken coops, chicken houses, whichever you want to call it, um, have a solid floor of some type. This one does not. This one has a slotted floor. And I mix three type of bedding materials. I use a wheat straw, and that wheat straw actually, actually connects the floor to keep everything from falling out so fast. Then I put large wood chips, and then I put a little bit of hemp. So I use three different materials. So one thing I forgot to show you guys, and I need to show you, is how this is constructed and how we're doing this. So what we've got is we've got basically a deck system. And on this deck system, we've got pressure tree of wood that has an oil-based stain on it. And we have a pretty good size gap in here. So all these boards have a pretty good size gap. And that's what allows both oxygen to come up from the bottom and not have that nasty slimy material, but also allows the smaller particles to fall through. Now we do use the wheat straw and that wheat straw actually comes across that and maintains a certain amount of bedding in here as well too. And eventually they'll sort of work over it and, and some of it will fall down. But that's the spacing and that's why we actually have that pass through system and oxygen comes back up. I don't know if there's any girls in here or not. Nope. So you can see I've got wheat straw, I've got wood chips, and I've actually got small hemp here. The hemp is very fine. Well, I want you to watch what happens when the girls come in here and walk around. Oh, <laughs> let me move this bag. They're probably all under here, by the way. Watch what happens here. See what's falling out? It actually falls through the bottom. And I was actually shocked how much it falls out. Um, there was a huge pile under here only after a week while they were trapped in here and they were inside scratching in here, there was a huge pile. So then what I do, I don't want to rake up a chicken. So then what I do, watch out girls, is I come under here, I've gotten most of it out. I come under here and I rake this. I already got most of it out. This is actually, it's not really wet. It's nice and dry, it's medium, it's not super dry. But I'll take this in a bucket. And now what I'll do is I'll actually come in here and I'll actually rotationally reapply it back on top. What I don't have is I don't have that strong ammonia order. If I need to, I can actually pull these little roosting bars out and come in here with a shovel and turn this every so often as well too. So one of the problems that I'm constantly seeing, especially like if you go to the forums and online sections is people are, are having this problem with the odor and with the slimy bottom and um, you definitely need to turn. You definitely need to turn this bedding. That's number one. Number two, uh, I know you can't change the floor construction of your chicken house, but who knows, maybe we'll, maybe we'll come up with something here. But this, so far, this method is actually working really, really well. I don't have that slimy buildup. I don't have that smell. And I'm actually not having to use too much of bedding material because <laughs> I may have six inches and then it falls down to three and I'm just replenishing. I'm putting it back on top because it's under here almost in a little compost pile with the earth good bacteria and then I'm taking it out and putting it back in here. Sometimes I'll pick up some bugs and they'll be in there eating them. Hi guys, how are you? How are you? I don't have anything for you right now, I'm sorry. I don't have anything for you. This is their first full day out in their run. It was actually quite interesting. So one mistake I made, there's the girls. Surprisingly, all but four of them went back into their house last night when it got dark. Um, and the mistake I made is I put up these roosts out here and I'm about to take them down because they really don't sit on these during the day and they just run around scratching and taking dust baths and doing whatever. 
But at night, a couple, four of them actually were up here last night and roosted and didn't go in. And I need them all to go in at night because that's the safe zone out there. So this is actually an experiment. And I'm not going to say that this is a proven theory, but so far it's worked out really well. It's going to cut down on the amount of bedding that I have to use. All this bedding gets actually rotates a rotational method where it all trickles down, gets exposed to oxygen, goes to the ground where there's a lot of microbes and bacteria. I mean, in a teaspoon of soil, there's more uh, microbes than there are people on the earth. So getting it back down on that soil is actually good. It actually sits there for a few days, maybe a week. And then all I do is I rake that up, bring it back up, put it on top. And if I ever start to have any kind of slime bottom or anything, I'm gonna get in there with a shovel and I'm gonna turn that and make sure. Right now with deep bedding methods, a lot of people are just, they start to smell an odor and they're putting a fresh layer of bedding on there and you're really not doing anything, you're just covering up the problem. Uh, you're just sort of masking it. And that's why I say, if you understand composting, use that composting knowledge. When you build compost, you better be turning that compost pile if you want a good aerobic compost pile. We do it all the time. We've done this for years and years and we've developed a lot of these compost uh, products like Dirt Booster Plus. But uh, hey, it's working. I'll give it a try and what I'll do is I'll monitor this over the next few months and let you guys, I'll follow up with a report just to show you how it's going, but I think it's going to work out really well. Anyways, uh, tune in later. I'm going to give you a full tour of the chicken coop and uh, that's it. Doc.